Hi, my name is Delio Vieira. I am an instructor at the College of Carpenters. Today we're going to do a circle check on a telehandler. I have the manufacturer's circle check sheet for this cat. It's a TL 943, 9,000 pounds capacity, 43 feet of reach. We're going to start off in the engine bay. We're going to go down the list and check off all the items. And if there's any damage, we will note it. We will start off by doing a visual of the engine bay. Check if there's any excess of oil. Check to see if everything looks correct. Check to see if there's any damage. We'll move on to the oil. We'll remove the dipstick. Wipe it off. And check the level. It looks correct. We'll do the same thing with the hydraulic pump. also correct level. We have a sight glass for the hydraulic fluid. We're going to see if it's in between the upper and the lower levels with the boom all the way down. Correct. And we'll move on to the battery. The battery, we're going to check the terminals, check to see how tight they are and see if the uh, battery is bolted down. Everything is correct with the battery. Let's move on to the radiator. There's no overflow reservoir for the rad. We actually have to open it and look inside to see if the level is to the top. All the fins are covered. It is also correct. Again, wrapping it up, we're going to look to see if anything, if we missed anything, see if any damage has occurred. We do not touch hydraulic hoses. They are under uh, high pressure and they're uh, braided wire. Once we concluded the engine bay, we're going to look at the hoses and frame of the machine. We'll start off with this tire. As it has in the circle check, we're going to check the lug nuts, sidewall, tread on both sides of the wheel. We're going to look for cuts and gouges and cracks. If apparent, we will make note of that on our circle check sheet. Hand check to see if all the lug bolts feel tight and we will do that on all four tires. We will also check the air pressure of all tires to meet the manufacturer's air pressure requirements. We will come around the back side of the machine. We will look for excessive mud, damage, anything that is not proper to the machine. We'll look at the lights to see if they're broken. When we go do our cabin inspection, we will turn the lights on and make sure they're all working properly. As we come around, we'll check the second out of the four tires, the exact same thing. Damage on the sidewalls, cuts, gouges, tread loss on the treads. Also check your lug nuts. And check your air pressure. Here is where the air filter is located for the machine. We do not open it. We do not take it apart. We just check to see if there's extra excessive dust. And we'll finger sweep it. This here is where the gas tank for this machine is located. We do not check. We'll check inside the gauges to see how much fuel. Never run out of fuel on your machine. Make sure you always have enough to do the day or the functions you need to. At this point, we're going to look at the whole cab. We're going to look at the conditions, the doors, the windows, the windshield, the wipers, the overhead guard, your mirrors. There's one located right here and one over the engine bay so you could see both sides of the machine when you're operating. We come around the front, the overhead guard, the lights. For now, we're just checking to see if there's any damage. We're on our third wheel. Same thing, sidewall, tread, lug nuts. We go on to the inside and here's the manufacturer's placard right here. 
we check to see if it's in, in legible condition. We check to see the model number and the capacity of the machine. While in here, I like to give my angle indicator a little spin to see if it's working, see if it's rusted up or frozen. Our outriggers, I like doing the same thing. As we come around the front, we check the attachment on the machine. This one here is a set of forks. We check the placard to see if it coincides with this machine and it meets the capacity. It's either going to be from the manufactured or it'll be engineered. Check to see if it's attached properly. Check to see the forks, if there's any excessive wear and tear or any damage that's been applied to it. Check to see the backrest and all the components, see if it's properly uh, greased. These forks here don't have keepers. They could slide freely. As you operate it, you have to be mindful of that when you're turning. On the other side, there's extra hydraulics. We check to see if the hoses, everything is correct, and to see if they're covered up. They're for other attachments that we can use with this machine. The other outrigger, give it a bit of a spin again to see if it's not seized up. And at this point, we've done a full circle. We've reached our fourth tire and we repeat the exact same thing. Sidewall, tread, in and out, lug nuts, and air pressure. Once we have checked the engine bay, the frame, the tires, hoses, electrical, now we're gonna check the functions. Let's go into the cab and check for our fire extinguisher, seat belt, and all the safety features. We'll check the seat, check the seat belt, Our fire extinguisher is present. We'll check to see our weather protected box and our manuals are in here. Start the machine. We'll first start off with the boom. If you pull it back, it will go up. If you pull it away from you, it will extend. On this machine, the thumb controls the forks. Up, left, down, right. You pull it towards you, it will retract. And down, forward. And now we're gonna check our angle and our distance with our indicators. And now we can see our capacity of the machine at that distance on our chart. Next we'll check the steering. Put your foot on the brake, take it out of park, in first gear go forward, return it to neutral and reverse. Make sure the back beeper is working. Next we'll check our steering. We have two wheel steering, four wheel steering and crab. Make sure your wheels are always straight before switching it from function. and four-wheel steering. Next, we will check our lights. Our hazard lights, our headlights,
we'll check to see if our outriggers are working one at a time. Next, we'll check our leveling cab. We'll look at the level on top. In both directions. And we'll bring it back to zero. We'll check to see if the horn is working. Now we can shut it down. And that'll conclude the function test of the TL943 telehandler.